was against Norway. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a bicicleta in scoring. No one ever, ever believes this, but I actually did. And it was, they wrote about it in the newspaper the day after. Not only scored, I did it on a, on a bicycle kick. Uh, uh, which was the highest point in my life. Uh, I, and I realized it the second after that it, it will never get better than this. Uh, and I think it had something to do with I, I, I got the influence from, from Martin for a, a second uh, uh, that, that uh, where I could be on a different level. And that never happened again. <laughs> that I don't remember. <laughs> The question is more about the adaptation process based on this uh, true story and especially more particularly this um, autobiographical um, stories and um, so the, in the beginning you said that uh, rather than just the uh, sports film it's more about drama and uh, it's very much character driven um, films and also in terms of the deaths and uh, like this kind of a story like the character is very intense and um, it's not easy to portray this uh, psychological journey uh, in the form of a sports film. And since uh, we didn't read the autobiography, um, and uh, the one you read is uh, when read he read his book. Uh, what like what was the uh, element you focused and you what was your like um, criteria of the selection probably like how did when you are making the plot. So uh, the book was dealing with his whole life. I chose to portray only his time in Italy. Um, so that was a shorter period of time, a uh, short part of the book. Uh, so, um, and then of course, I mean, when you adapt uh, a, a real life story, um, you know, you need to be honest and true to what happened but at the same time you need to make a piece of art uh, in itself uh, so i always try to find the balance where you know i always think that it doesn't have to be factually right in order to be true uh, so sometimes i, I change things uh, in order to make the story stronger and, and also more true in a sense. I think that the, the most important thing is to stay, you know, to stay uh, true to the essentials of the story. Um, and for me, this was always a tale about, basically it's a soldier's tale about a boy leaving home, going to war, coming home wounded as a man. That's also from that idea that I, I chose to have this, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, that I had the act breaks with uh, uh, the different part of the year, the summer and the spring and the summer, and fall and winter. Uh, on the, the structural problems within football, uh, the football industry and all the kind of the, 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 the toxic parts of his uh, strive for perfection, I also wanted uh, in the film that it, uh, that it should also be more of a coming of age where you where there is not only the strive for perfection and not only football, but I also wanted to have this kind of story about a 16 year old that does a lot of things for the first time. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a kid moving away from home for the first time and you know going abroad for the first time uh, having his first job even if it's a, as a football player uh, meeting his first first girlfriend uh, falling in love for the first time driving a car for the first time and so that was always a very big part of the film as well so there's you know essentially So this story, as you said, this uh, you actually described the four seasons. But rather than just going back to before, like a not a like a 
regression is more like the keys moving forward and uh, it, that's why your subdescribe this story is coming of age and i think that ending sequence was really powerful and uh, it could be just perceived as a uh, failed or lost but the uh, actually it actually shows a strong determination not doing it chose not to do is also powerful and just tell me about the uh, ending sequence what was your idea of um like like ending sequence in this way Yes, exactly. I wanted to question uh, the idea of what success is. Uh, I wanted the, the liberation uh, to feel like a success. And that's why I also had the, that shot of uh, him looking into the house between the, the bars, where he could you know, look at the ones who will stay there and maybe have a big career as football players, but he he is in a way the success story because he's the one that actually just chose his path in life and became free and independent. Uh, and I think, you know, at this this sequence and the idea of having the car as a as a central metaphor in the movie was, I would say, the first thing I uh, came up with. Um, so that so that uh, ending scene has been there ever since I was uh, 23 and promised to make the movie. So it's always been there uh, for me. Uh, and, I, I, and I love the idea of the car as a, yeah, as a metaphor for liberation and, and uh, of, you know, choosing your path in life. So um, this is character driven film and especially the character, the protagonist Martin is actually uh, shown in the every, every scene, almost every scene. And so the, uh, the actor is very crucial in this film and also the, he's a soccer player so he has to be mentally, physically ready and uh, it's very challenging uh, performance that uh, he actually shows the insecurity and hypersensitiveness and all that. And uh, that's why I was so... Um, stunned by uh, his stellar performance of um, uh, Eric Inye and like so I was curious about the casting process and also some director even says okay so how did, like what was your direction point and they were saying I didn't direct anything I was just I just casted this uh, person so um and I, I kind of wanted to hear some like story or anecdotes about this uh, casting process of this uh, Eric yeah uh, I knew all along that uh this film would be extremely subjective. So I would rely on a very young actor carrying this movie. Uh, so I was quite nervous when casting because I needed to find someone who could have both the acting and where the, who, someone who could make the football work. So either I would have a footballer that I've tried to learn how to act or an actor that, uh, that I had to, <laughs> had to play football. Um, I, I went with the actor, um, and uh, I had seen Eric Enge in uh, some small role in a crime uh, drama. Uh, he was not very known, um, but I, I thought there was something interesting about him. Then he came in for, for casting, and I, I, I was very, very um, intrigued by his kind of combination of uh, fragility and and brutality in a way um, the problem was two I would say one he was so damn thin <laughs> and so he could, he could not at all look like an athlete that was number one and number two he was so damn nice <laughs> uh, so I had to make him look like an athlete that took 18 months uh, of brutal training uh, he, he reshaped his whole body uh, and 18 months of trying to make him less nice. <laughs> uh, uh, so he had to change basically everything about himself. You know, because when it's young actors, it's often that they play themselves in movies. Here it's not at all like that. He's as far away as possible from his own persona. Uh, and my, the last thing I had to do was, because he, he, he had a tendency to smile, and Martin Bengtsson doesn't smile much. <laughs> so I had to put him braces in his mouth and tell him that he's not allowed to show it. 
Um, that also created then opportunities because it's also a prison in your in your mouth to have a to have a, a, a braces. Uh, so I think that's a good example of how how when you're choosing a certain actor, it also affects the story a lot. Uh, but he did a tremendous work, a complete acting job that he did a, it was a long time. Uh, and I think he also knew that this was his ticket to become a movie star. Yeah. My heart, and I think that I would never forget him and his name. <laughs> For um, screenplays of uh, Borgs versus and uh, McEnroe, and I love that. And um, um, I think the the idea of the uh, like you could actually carry yourself if you are like you know aiming and pursuing the profession as a goal is too much, and then the like choosing not to do is also the success is not a failure. And now I just came up with this question. What is your definition of a failure? Wow. <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> We're Thursday afternoon. <laughs> uh, I would say that my definition of failure is uh, not being true to what you want to do. Uh, and I think that is very common in uh, my profession. Uh, the filmmakers start to make films they believe the market wants, or the festival wants, or the audience wants, and stop listening to the inner beat of their heart and what it wants and what you know what you need to tell. Because if it's just something you want to tell, that's not enough. It's something it needs to be something you need to tell, and you don't always know why you need to tell it. Um, so I would say it's a failure to be to not be true to that. Um, um, yeah, idea of of why to make things. I love your movie and film, and there was a scene like he was cutting his braces. So at first I was gonna ask like if you added like the braces to the character or like Martin like wear the braces, but you said like you added to not make him smile. So, <laughs> so then like why did you add the scene like he cutting the braces? Like is that mean like um his it's like his division or like deviation like or getting out of cage like the tiger uh, yes that was my intention uh, that it's uh, it's it's a uh, to have braces is to have a prison in your mouth uh, I had braces uh, basically my whole teens I fantasized every day of taking it out. I dreamt about taking it out with with uh, uh, with a scissor. <laughs> Actually, that's I think that's where it comes from. Um, and uh, I think that is also says something about the filmmaking process because even though this one is based on someone else's life, I need to make it personal for myself in order to you know, make it into the best possible movie. Uh, so if I make, a, so when I made a film about, uh, when I wrote the script for Borg versus McEnroe, for example, which is a film about, about rage, it was about my rage. Uh, and when I make a film about Martin Bengtsson's loneliness, it's about my loneliness. Um, so, uh, and I think that's the only way for me to approach it. Uh, in order for it to be real. Um, and sometimes you get an idea from a practical need. Like here, I needed him to stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and he had this tendency, to, you know, because he's a charming guy. He wanted to get out of situations by smiling. And I, I wanted, I actually, I tortured 
for Eric uh, over this period of the years uh, in many ways with his consent though but um, <laughs> he was actually working uh, I just remember this now he was actually working in a toy store while we were doing uh, the prep uh, and he was had an extra job in, in a toy store and I gave him a task to um, <laughs> to uh, wait five seconds until he answered people uh, and to not smile <laughs> for a whole day, uh, which might have had a negative effect on the sales <laughs> on that particular toy store. But I think it was very good for him as an actor because it's extremely awkward to stand in silence and to exist within silence and not responding. And I wanted him as a character. He should not respond. His integrity is too strong. He's not responding. So uh, that was, um, yeah. And then the, the Brexit came in. Um, so I, I just want to ask you another question about some symbol. Um, you, so in the at the beginning and almost in the end of the movie, there is this um, scene, people make noises of pigs. Um, awkwardly, and um, I was wondering if it's a way of you making people laugh, like like a black comedy, or um, is it just a way of him expressing his emotions, um, feelings, which is um, very de depressed and pressured by um, the industry. Uh, yeah, I, I I just and and I didn't really remember whether it was a coach um, like um, at the beginning of the movie uh, there was this person who's making the joke and I didn't remember who the person was so can you explain me more? 한국으로 말할게요. 처음에도 농담을 처음 던진 사람이 코치인지 That's a good question. I would say uh, that both interpretations there are right that uh, because in the in the beginning when it's his agent uh, that that um, uh, do this the screaming pig uh, he does it as a joke uh, I mean when he's talking about it, when he became a professional football player he did that as an initiation right when he came to a new club uh, as a joke um, then when his uh, that terrible night when 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 uh, it all uh, spirals for for Martin Banks and and He's in this kind of nightmarish situation of being drunk and sad and on the verge of everything and he thinks he's screwed up his life and someone tells him to say something funny or he will die and then the first thing that comes to mind is to scream like a pig. Uh, and um, it's, I would say it was one of those moments for me um, on set when I felt strongest in front of the monitor uh, uh, when when Eric uh, was screaming straight into the camera, and, you know how it starts as a joke, and but it just continues to a point where it at first gets awkward, and then it reaches a point where it's like he's he's screaming because he's dying, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, that was always a powerful moment. Uh, for me uh, and the reason why I have it in the beginning is also I wanted to start the film with something that would kind of make everything normal after that uh, so that you kind of you push the limits for what's realistic and normal so if you have someone screaming like a pig for the first 45 seconds after that pretty much everything is normal uh, so that gives me room in, in the realism. So it's almost like building a house for the realism. With high high uh, roof and wide uh, uh, walls. And actually, uh, I don't know if you know a little bit about the orientalism, especially the Korean uh, culture. The tiger is uh, like a symbol of um, like spirit. And also, it actually uh, symbols uh, like a braveness and a bravery, uh, brave, like how brave this uh, the Korean people is. But the I am curious how the connotation of the tiger or the symbol of the tiger means in Scandinavia. 
and then the, along with the questions about the, the tiger uh, tigers interesting yes I, I'm, I'm aware of, of uh, how it's um, perceived in, in, in many cultures and it's pretty much, much often uh, you know pretty much always the same that it's you know braveness and, and uh, spirits and, and so, uh, Thinks uh, Scandinavians are spiritual spiritual enough to to really see it as as a, a, you know as a symbolic. Uh, I think we see, uh, and I think that was what I was really go 